Greetings, subjects, and welcome to Stronghold the Original. Some of you may be familiar with this game from back early 2000s before games like Civilization had really reached their pinnacle of popularity when castle building games, games like RuneScape and such, were just beginning to gain popularity. I was a RuneScape kid. <laughs> yeah, a bit ashamed to admit it. In fact, I didn't really play much RuneScape because I didn't lie about my age. At the time, I wasn't 13, and I told the system that, and well, I didn't get to play RuneScape unless I was at a friend's house. Anyhow, I digress. On the note of castle building games, and also on the note of being absent for many, many months, I've decided to ease back into everything with a smooth playthrough of a little bit of Stronghold. Now, there's a lot of things you can do if you've played this game, and you'll know this. We can fight people, challenge ourselves with a bit of Mortal Kombat, or we can do things based on the economy. We can achieve a certain amount of resources, or we just edit maps and do stuff like that. Actually, you know what? I wonder if I played now. Okay, I don't have any save files. <laughs> My old save directory on this game was overloaded with all sorts of random goofy saves. Anyhow, today, what I would like to do is just a smooth little build through of a castle. The way in which we do that, we go into free build and we choose ourselves a map to our liking. Personally, back when I was young, I loved Fork in the River because it allowed for some very wide open spaces for building castles, though there are some other maps that are a bit more challenging than others. We have this map that has incredibly high terrain values, so it's very difficult to build anything without it being rejected because of a hill error or what have you. But I'm thinking we ought to go with, let's try Fernhaven for new, because this is a very large map. And as you might expect, large maps allow plenty of time and space to keep things interesting. Also, if you hear me taking slight breaths, I just ate dinner and uh, there you go. Couldn't escape the burp for long. I am a bit burpity, if that be a word. Anyhow, one of my favorite games and one of my favorite things to do on a rainy day or when I had school off was play Stronghold. Build a castle, find myself waging a war against bandits, and pleasing peasants with all sorts of amenities like apples and beer. Things of that sort. If any of you have ever played this game before, You'll have a great time watching this. If you've never played Stronghold before, allow me to show you a little bit of the ropes. We get to choose ourselves our main keep, which is like the HQ or the main focal point of our entire operation. I always loved the Saxon Hall because it was the most quaint of them all. It was the most fun and it just kind of gave me this Viking feel as if I'm starting in the Americas. Or some new land that we've just discovered and we need to set ourselves up anew. So, as you can see here, all these resources are spawning in. These are the basic resources that we have to play with. Not all of them, just a few. We have wood and stone for starters, but we don't have any food set up yet. Well, that's the place for the granary, which is where all of the food is stored. Think of it like a refrigerator nowadays, but in a wooden building without refrigeration. <laughs> you see meat in there, you see some apples. Those are our basic food stores for now. If we click on the building, we can see that we have some food, the bar signifies when a unit of food is gone, and we can choose all of our peasants' rations, all the way from none to have a lot of food, fat cake. So, what do we do in this game? What can be done? Well, we have a bunch of options down here, a lot of fun little buildings. We also have industry buildings here to make iron or to mine for stone. I said that backwards. To quarry stone or to finite it so we can actually use it for construction and such or you say mining iron things of that sort even pitch it's one of my personal favorites if you don't know what it is i'm going to save it for a little later we also have farm buildings to get food on the way everything from hunting for meat to making hops for beer of course town buildings churches apothecaries wells houses important things weapons buildings which we will be delving into quite soon we have our Fletchers, which is, of course, arrows, swords, leather armor, shields, all sorts of stuffs. And our food processing buildings. Granary, like we just saw that we placed down, bakery, mill, our taverns, all sorts of great stuff. So, 
whenever you first start up in this game, it's really important to get food on the line, since people need food. It's one of those critical things that we rely on, believe it or not. So I'm going to put down a few hunter's posts, since there's no more a quainter feeling than having people going out and hunting for meat. Now, as you saw, that building did cost some of my wood stores, so we will need to get some wood on the line, and to do that, we will put down some woodcutter's offices. Offices? It's a hut. This, it's no more than a hut. No offices here. Now, the hunters will go out with their dogs, and they will check for deer that roam the map. We may have some deer around... Nowhere. There are no deer. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we kind of need deer in order to make this work. But it looks like that's not gonna happen. Oh. Well, in that case, let's go with a surefire. How about apples? How you like them apples? Aw, oh, perfect. See, now we got some people bringing some food to the table. Building these costs wood, and it costs one of our peasants that we can see forming around our keep. The amount of peasants you have is defined here on my happy man, my scribe, telling me about my gold, my popularity, all sorts of stuff. If we want more people, we're going to need to make some more places. People live in hovels. They do upgrade over time, so they don't always look so desolate. But we do need some more in order to have more people. And you can see them all being sworn in here at the Saxon Hall. Great stuff, don't you agree? Now, in order to expand and begin getting more resources, we're going to need to expand our stockpile, which is where all the wood is delivered, all the stone, all the iron, all the flour, all the what-have-you resources. Now, there is a fun little cheaty way to get ahead in this game. Not really cheaty, not even really exploity y but not doing it the good old-fashioned way, and that's utilizing the marketplace. With this marketplace, we can trade all sorts of things, whether it be our wares, whether it be survival necessities like our food, weapons, the whole lot. And we will be utilizing that later, since gold is important when it comes to building new building projects, things of that nature. But right now we're coming a little, little ways away, or a little way from the beginning. We have some apples being grown. We have a burgeoning little marketplace here, with wood being delivered, with people socializing about the keep. It's nice. It's calm. You can imagine why I played this on rainy days. It's just something nice to do to sit inside and to take your mind off of things. Just relax, make a castle your own, and have a fantastic time. And here I think is the trader coming by, bringing in the new deals for the marketplace. So, what's next? Can I guess what all of you, or that one of you that is probably watching, <laughs> want me to do next? Shall we work on building the walls to secure our castle or should we do something more along the lines of creative and fun like maybe another orchard and perhaps a new type of farm maybe some cows some moomoos some of the bovine species perhaps that's an order well i feel like building a little bit of a castle today i've had or i've been itching to build a little bit of a castle and while we're doing this I will take a moment to tell you guys about what has been going on recently. So, as some of you know who have been longtime subscribers or have been watching the channel at all over the course of the past year, you've noticed that Dempsey and I have grown apart from the YouTube channel. We don't upload as often. In fact, we are rarely uploading, and you're probably thinking, Hey, what's going on there? Why in the world would you leave at your peak? Well, it's not necessarily a leaving. It's a conflict of time interests, which is a really nebulous way to say, hey, we don't exactly have time. Dempsey and I, when we first made the YouTube channel, we were sophomores in high school. And I'll build as much of the castle as I can while I'm talking about this. We were sophomores in high school. This was 2012. And at that time, we were all together. All of those of us who made videos together. <clears throat> not burps. They were with me, Dempsey, and quite a few other folks. If you look back to our earliest, earliest videos, you'll hear a lot of interesting voices, one of which is mine, but you probably can't tell because puberty was in full swing, as well as other things. But we had time together, and we were together. However, as the channel grew, we did in age, and we did in year. We became juniors, and then seniors. In senior year, we had the most time to make videos. We were able to dedicate hours a day which is what it took to make a good video. Hours a day to making our best videos. 
However, after a time, we started running out of time sophomore, or maybe rather senior year, when we started choosing what we want to do with our life, where do we want to go, who do we want to share it with. I decided to go to college, as did Dempsey. Do you want to know where I go to college? Well, I can't tell you that point yet. We're on the first date. I decided to go to college, and so did Dempsey. However, some things got conflicted, and now Dempsey's a working man. And I am nearly through my first year of college. College has been quite busy, and you may expect that's why I haven't been uploading. Dempsey and I have been uploading a little... Stop texting me. We haven't been uploading a lot because of time conflictions, and partly because YouTube kind of got a little dull to us. At first, it was a very driving feeling of, wow, this is really new, this is so cool, all these people watching the videos. And don't get me wrong, it's not cool to have a lot of people watching videos and enjoying what you have to say in your personality. But after a while, it becomes kind of draining on you to do a lot of the same things, and to edit for hours on end for sometimes not the best feedback. So, we kind of got a little tired of it after two and a half years. So we decided to take a little bit of a break. And things became very different in our lives. Dempsey and I rarely see each other, unfortunately, anymore. Dempsey's working nearly all the time, and I'm away at college. So, unfortunately, I guess you could say the gang kind of fell apart in that sense. But that doesn't mean we're not friends still. We are still great friends, it's just we barely hear from each other, so things get kind of difficult on that sense. On a less grim note, the castle's coming along nicely. Building wood walls is the cheapest way to do it. But it's not the safest, and we'll see once we trigger ourselves a little war at the end, which is something I didn't want to tell you at first, but we're going to be putting our castle to the test with a little bit of a battle towards the end. Anyhow, to fill you in a little more on lifelike things, while we explore the map a little, just to do a little cool cruise by with the map, look at that. Things have just become wildly different in our lives, and YouTube hasn't exactly found its place in that yet, since... I'm still in school, and Dempsey's working all the time, time just doesn't really work out, unfortunately, but I would like to still do YouTube and have some fun with it. In fact, earlier tonight I attempted to do a Minecraft Mod Spotlight, one of the things that garnered us a lot of subscribers and a lot of you probably came here from. However, apparently my Minecraft account was cancelled because I hadn't logged on in like a year, and I didn't remember the information to recover it, so I think we're a little out of luck there, unfortunately. So. I don't really know what's going on with that. Yeah, <laughs> not the best of news. So that's kind of a drawback. And recently, I haven't had a whole lot of people to play games with. One of the best things about YouTube was I was playing games with people. People I didn't know, people who I really knew and loved to play with. Well, unfortunately, I don't really have much of either at this point since my time is really being used elsewhere. And um, a lot of people have unfortunately just grown up or I've lost contact with them. So... There's not a lot going on, unfortunately, in terms of YouTube, but I would still like to keep up with it a little and try to have some fun with it while I'm at it. And I figured one of the best ways to do that is to play one of my very favorite games as a kid to chill out, talk with some of you guys. If anyone is still around, thank you very much. I would love to play with any of you if you're still around and still interested. If there's a game we can play together, I've got Skype and I've got a little bit of time as summer's coming up, so... I'd like to get back into the swing of things, and I'd like to apologize for not being around and not really offering a definitive where I'm at or what the status of things is until really now. So, yeah, sorry about that, everyone. I'll make it up to you, hopefully, <laughs> if you allow me to. I would like to make some more videos, not necessarily on a regular basis. I don't know if I can do that. I have finals coming up, which is really going to conflict things when it comes to time. Again, one of those precious commodities that we don't always have. But I would like to do some more YouTube videos. But I want them to be revolving around anyone who's still watching. Because I feel like that'd be the best, most fun way to use my time. Would be doing it with people who actually support the dream that me and Dempsey have. So yeah, that's, that's my preachy speechy thing right there. If anyone's still here, shout out to you. I would love to play with you. So hit me up on Kick. Or something, yo. Because that's that's my preferred dating service. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, the castle is coming Why along a little. I want to make myself a nice little box. Now, we're going to put a lot of stuff in this box. As you can see, the farm stuff isn't in the box. You might be asking, but the farm's the important stuff. Why is it outside the box? Well, it doesn't really fit well into the box. And you see, we will be improving the castle a little by putting some things inside it. But first, we have to decide what gets a state 
or what gets a stake within the castle. There's a lot of things that we can put in here. Some of them I've gone over, some of them I haven't. I mean, we have all of our church-like services. In fact, we could start a church pretty soon if we do get our gold up. Fortunately, we don't really have any stores to trade. What I mean by stores, I mean like stone or iron, things that I'm selling in bulk right now. We do need a lot of wood to get these things underway. So I think I'll take the luxury of buying some wood up. Since we're going to need gold to kind of get things forward, one of the best ways to do that is trading. And you can trade all sorts of things. I haven't really gone over the resources a lot in this game, aside from wood, which is a necessity right now. But as you can see on the map, there are some of these red stores right here. These are iron ore that you can put iron mines on, and you can send peasants over to mine the iron and bring back the ingots. I'm trying to find some stores of stone, which I'm not really seeing. They appear as white things on the map, kind of like this kind of stone right here, but I'm not sure if that's big enough to be built on. Actually, it is. We can build a quarry right here, which is where rough stone is refined and chiseled into fine stone to be used for castle walls or formal buildings like that. We also have these ditches over here. These are pitch ditches. Pitch is most equal to, say, like tar or oil, something of that resource. And we can put our little rigs in here. Unfortunately, they have to be a very specific part of it, of the rig. Usually it has to be bubbling like this over here. You can see we can put some pitch in these. Our peasants do have to walk a little of a way, so that's the one drawback there. Our closest resource is stone. If I could place two quarries in here, that would be really cool, but I don't know if the space will really work out, so let's just put one for now and have a good time with it. In order to bring the stone back to marketplace, we do need an ox tether. The ox carries the stone back, so let's employ one of those guys as well. We'll see pretty soon we'll have some um, quarrymen. <laughs> A small gift. Now you see, if you're too nice to your peasants, they begin to want things. That's actually a cool thing Machiavelli once said. Machiavelli, many of you may know, some of you may not. That's cool. You'll learn about him at some point, perhaps, if you're interested in politics, things of that nature. I love politics. In fact, I'll disclose a little bit of a piece of information here. In school, in college, I'm studying political science. So I am a bit of a Politico myself. So Machiavelli, let's have a little Machiavelli talk while we watch our quarrymen get to work. Machiavelli once said about the benevolent and or the vindictive king, he who is nice to his citizens first and then cruel to them later, they will remember his cruelty and treat him as a tyrant. But he who starts as a tyrant and then treats his citizens benevolently is remembered as a good king. So it's kind of the primacy effect of humans. That which we experience last is what we remember most. So as you can see in this cool little animation here, we see our men going to work, chiseling the stone and putting it into its cool blocks, brought over to the ox tether. And after that is full, the ox will bring back all of the stone and we can sell it up. Now our castle walls are nearly complete. In fact, I think we have just enough wood to do it, but I think there is a tree in the way right here. So actually, Let's just get that dealt with right there. Perfect. Now, it seems like these hunters aren't really serving any purpose because there are no deer, so I'm going to be a little cheaty here. In this free build mode, you won't encounter other players or factions unless you summon them. And the way to do that is to press F1. You can see invents, uh, invents, <laughs> events or invasions. And I think I can trigger some sort of, well, it doesn't look like I can trigger any animals aside from rabbits so let's try that rabbits will explode somewhere on the map and they'll eat all of our carrots i think <laughs> let's see where have they spawned you'll see a big blossoming batch of white dots on the map when they explode and where they explode hello anyone any rabbits Ugh, where's, the, where's the rabbits at what the heck I summoned rabbits. Do I need to explode them again? I can do that. No sweat. Uh, rabbit explosion. Rabbit explosion. Rabbit explosion. Very low, sire. 